This is a disaster. We live in a culture full of stuff, bombarded with advertisements pushing us to buy more stuff. We accumulate more and more and more until we need an extra storage unit to fit it all. Today, there are more self-storage facilities in the US than there are McDonald's, Subway, and Jack in the Box restaurants combined. I heard about minimalism a few years back, and it was something that really piqued my interest. Minimalism is a lifestyle movement of living with less material items. So there's this whole community of people living this way and connecting online. You have all different types of people. It seems like a really beautiful way to live your life. I have one friend who just lives out of a tiny little duffel bag and he's ready to travel at the drop of a dime. Well, I think it's always good to have less and only have the essentials. What's the hardest part? I mean, I think it's easy. That makes it easy because it's hard to have more things. I hope this week can allow me to find some of that freedom for myself. There are these two guys kind of like at the forefront of this movie movement on social media that called The Minimalist. They made this Netflix documentary called Minimalism. I got The Minimalist to come into the studio and ask them some questions about how I could start my own minimalist journey. What are some guidelines for living a minimalist life? Minimalism is not about deprivation, it's about bringing what is important. And I think really what it comes down to is what is adding value to one's life. For everyone it's different yeah. and it's always changing. We've got a lot of clutter. Even if we do a really good job organizing it, it's still organized hoarding. I have a 90-90 rule where if I haven't used something in the last 90 days and I don't plan on using it in the next 90 days, I'll probably get rid of it. What advice do you have for me while I do this experiment? Get really clear on why you're doing it. I think we all understand the how-to. I do feel somewhat attached to my items. Through this experiment, I really want to let go of that. I don't want to empty out my room right now. What did I get myself into? What I quickly started to realize is that I've been holding on to stuff for years. I consider myself to be someone who's pretty frugal, and it's not that I was buying more stuff, it was that I hadn't been letting go of anything. I'm overflowing in yoga pants. After going through everything, I realized I have a lot more stuff than I thought I did. Here's the breakdown. 14 pieces of wall decor, 55 books, 25 candles slash trinkets, 13 journals, 53 makeup items, 123 beauty slash hygiene products, 24 pairs of shoes, 15 purses and bags, 22 miscellaneous accessories, and more than 300 items of clothing. I decided to box everything up, shove it in a storage closet, and at the end of the week, I could decide what I want to keep and what I want to donate. All that I'm really left with is my work stuff, laptop, my bed. I'm not moving furniture because I have nowhere to put it, uh, but I emptied everything out of it. For the next week, I would live with only the essentials. This included a hat, an armband and headphones for running, my yoga mat, a foam roller, my water bottle, one book, a small bag, a binder full of very important documents, and my speaker. I cannot live without my speakers. I listen to music every single day my meditations on here and I use it for my yoga practice. This gratitude journal was hidden underneath like 10 other journals and I completely forgot that I have this. I'd also write in my gratitude journal every night. I limited myself to only essential hygiene products like a toothbrush and toothpaste, face wash, soap, and deodorant. Makeup would not be considered essential. I picked out enough yoga clothes and workout clothes to get me through the week just so I wasn't doing a ton of laundry. And then a few key items of regular clothing, mostly dresses just because they're easy and make you look the most put together with minimal work. Decluttering is merely the first step. The real purpose of minimalism has to do with the benefits we experience once we're on the other side of the decluttering. So I thought that after I emptied my room, I would feel empty, but I feel really good. Looking around my room and seeing how clear it is, it's nice. I'm feeling optimistic about this week. I'd like to see if this experiment would allow me to free up my time a little bit more. I'm gonna time myself and see how fast I can get ready. Seven minutes and 23 seconds and I am out the door on my way to work. My hair's wet, no makeup. But, you know, I'm not gonna be late. I thought I would feel a little bit empty walking into an empty room after a day of work. It's kind of refreshing. It really is. Look at this beautiful van. Beautiful. What's his name? Oscar. Her name. Oscar, I love that name. So I met this guy, Jim, when I was walking down the street. He was in this really cool green van, and it looked like he was living out of the van, so I stopped and asked him, hey, like, what's your story? He said that he had given up his life to kind of go travel 
and live out of a van. I love this thing. It's so great. Cool, eh? I want to get one. How did you find this lifestyle and what did you give up to live this way? I gave up like my career at the time, which was a restaurant owner. I had two restaurants and a cocktail bar. My minimalism lifestyle started when I sold my house. I used to have like a 3,500 square foot house with tons of stuff in it. Slowly but surely I eliminated and lim eliminated stuff. And it's not like I, I watched a documentary, I read a book about it. It's just, it, it was just something that came out of me naturally. The goal of it all was just to live a life of not being encumbered with, not just with things, but with timetables and schedules and appointments and expectations. So it's only day three and I'm already having to do laundry because I didn't account for the fact that I would need a pair of underwear for working out and yoga and then a pair of underwear for actually wearing so I already ran out of clean underwear. Kind of like going on a date tonight and kind of date. I don't know if it's a date, whatever. I can't really put on any makeup and uh, I'm starting to get a pimple right here. So this is when minimalism starts to be not fun for me. At first it was nice not having to choose what I'm gonna wear and now I'm really bummed that I like can't choose. I really feel like a slob today. <laughs> Ryan, do you think I look like a slob? <laughs> no comment. Just no. be honest. <laughs> you need to go change. <laughs> <laughs> the minimalist life is not not cute. I'm on my way to Santa Monica to interview this woman who I met through minimalist.org where they have like all these community meetup groups um, in every major city and so I just hit up the one for LA. I'm going to talk to her because I want to get a female perspective about this lifestyle. For me I think one of the biggest things has been just like not wearing makeup, letting go of some clothing and, and living with very few pieces of clothing so I feel like I am a little lost in like how <laughs> I put myself together every day. I would say that my space is very well curated. So everything that I have in here, I love it, or it has some sort of story behind it or serves some sort of purpose, if not more than one purpose. You don't have that many clothes. How do you feel as a female? How do you feel like it's affected your expression if it, if it has? If I don't love it or feel really good in it, it does not stay in my closet. Were you somebody who always wore makeup and was attached to like, that kind of stuff. I like makeup, like I like to feel pretty. I'm a lot more intentional about the makeup products that I have and that I own. I have this idea of minimalism in my head, I think, when I started this. When you learn that, oh, it doesn't have to be so extreme, you right. can kind of make it your own. I, I really think that our Material possessions are a physical manifestation of what's going on inside us. Once I started dealing with that external clutter, I was able to deal with what was going on inside of me. The mental clutter, the emotional clutter, the spiritual clutter, the financial clutter, this internal clutter. What I learned this week is that there's no right way to live a minimalist lifestyle, but that it did add a lot of value in my life and freedom to live with a lot less material items. I think I'm somebody that is too messy and gets too sweaty to live with so few clothing items although i do think i'm gonna end up donating a lot of my clothes along with a lot of my other material possessions and i love the way my room is now with it being so simple i felt like my headspace was a lot clearer i was able to get out more meet more people and live more in the moment i'm writing in my gratitude journal and i can't talk because i have my retainer in i am grateful for my retainer. No, just kidding. I mean, I am grateful for this because it keeps my teeth straight.